Hello, Gemini. This is going to be your October Tarot Scope. Your week or your month rather of September starts out with the Queen of Swords. This is probably you. This is the yin energy of you, Gemini, whoever you are, male or female. And this tells me that you're starting out the month ready to defend yourself. Uh, the Queen of Swords is not a warrior with weapons. She's a warrior with words. And she's fair, she's balanced, she's a little bit unemotional, slightly aloof. Some people may find her to be too unemotional, but she is fair. And you can see by the picture of the lovers behind her in the window that she understands human nature and she is a, you know, a woman herself who appreciates relationships and life. So if this is your boss, the point is that she does understand life. She is not... Um, she is not the kind of boss who makes you give up everything just for your job. But I do see that there is some sadness in the first week of the month of September for you, Gemini, that you do suffer some kind of a loss, and it's probably a personal loss, and that makes things difficult for you. You may even decide that you need to take time off of work to deal with um, this loss. The Hierophant is a person who is um, the head of an organization in older older times this would be a priest a rabbi um, a minister um, you know somebody who headed a uh, religious organization but today I think we can say that it's anyone that you trust that you that you would go to for advice in times of need and you're definitely going to be um, in time of need during this first week of September Gemini the second week finds you just plowing yourself back into your routine, maybe in an effort to just forget about the loss of the first week, but you've got the Six of Wands, the Six of Swords, the Six of Wands, and the Six of Pentacles. Now, the Six of Wands and the Six of Swords are very similar, I think. They both have this pattern, this very symmetrical pattern with the Wands and Swords. And the Six of Swords tells you that now Swords are your words, your concepts, your communications, and the sixes are very regular. This is a daily thing for you. This is what you do. So perhaps you're a writer of some kind um, where communicating is a part of your daily bread, as it were. The six of wands has to do with you, your identity, that you regularly uh, promote yourself in a particular way. This is the image that you put out to the world that you're very, very comfortable with that. So coming on the heels of the Five of Cups, I would have to say that you may be covering up the hurt, the pain, by just going on about your business and trying to act as if it's business as usual and nothing's the matter. The Six of Pentacles is literally your job and what you do every day and your routines, how you take care of your body and such. And so again, I think you're just going about these daily routines in order to tell yourself and the world that you're okay, that there's nothing to worry about. The third week, you come out as the star. So apparently you've done something in that second week, probably, that really gave you um, a spotlight, that really put a spotlight on your achievements or a particular achievement or a project. And so you're the person of the hour that everybody is thanking and acknowledging and giving kudos to. And that may feel really good, although it may just roll off your back because you're still grieving. The uh, Nine of Wands is next, and this is going to be a fire sign person who is ready to defend you. Somebody who's ready to say, look, guys, they're not just ready. You know, they're not really ready for prime time. They're, they've suffered a loss and they are not really themselves. So just, you know, treat them gently. Treat them with kid gloves for the moment. So this is your defender. This is your person who is stepping up to the plate and defending you. 
and this could also be a separate person or the same person, someone who is from your past, who has known you for a very, very long time, who is there to comfort you and pops back up into your life, it, if it isn't this Nine of Wands person, comes back into your life at your time of need. The Wheel of Fortune and the Ace of Cups dictate the fourth week of the month, and so I'm thinking that things really turn around. The Wheel of Fortune very often comes and turns when we have big events happen in our life. So, not surprisingly, something really different is coming up in your life, and it's changing things for the better. So you were the star, you were defended, and now your life is really taking a turn for the better, because we've got the Ace of Cups here. And the Ace of Cups could indicate a, rela a new relationship, a baby, a new job, something that you love that's new, and it's coming along with the King of Wands. And the King of Wands would be a Yang energy, a more masculine style energy, but an air sign. So like you, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. Now, you probably your, your reading begins with the Queen of Swords and ends with the King of Swords. So this could all be you. This could all be you just coming to a deeper appreciation of your own self, your own abilities, your own heart, your own talents. And that would be great. But I think it's a relationship because very often we see the kings and queens as couples, as people in relationship. So it could be, Gemini, that you're going to begin and or maybe bolster a relationship that you're already in with the king of swords or yeah with the king of swords so that's that's what i'm going to say there now let's look at your oracle cards and see what comes up with that the oracle card from the first deck which is the black moon astrology by susan shepherd let me get this out of here is second house owning now this has a piece of money on the card and the second house of our chart really does have to do with money but it also has to do with our own resources such as things we own but talents we possess inherent knowledge that we have so it isn't just money it does govern your uh, paycheck from a normal job um, but not investments and not money that you share with your spouse or that you get from your spouse or that you invest with a, with a partner. So the second house owning, let's see what they say about that. So this is talking about how you're handling finances. How do you handle them? How do you look out for yourself? How are you being rewarded in your job? And uh, are you making a good living at what you love or are you sacrificing your life in order to get a paycheck? So there are things that you can do to make your life more enjoyable and it might one of those things might be altering your job or even getting a new job. But since the Wheel of Fortune is, is turning right now to something that you love, this would be a very good time to look for a new job. Meeting up with stubborn individuals or being unyielding yourself could also be an issue. It is important to stay the course but also to be flexible when dealing with others especially concerning goals or any financial matter. Music, especially the human voice or issues concerning the voice box may somehow figure in. Beauty, maintaining a good appearance and having a sense of fashion at this time is also imperative. So you're really gonna be focusing on your earning ability. And I do wanna emphasize that this really falls in line with these two cards, with the Queen of Swords and the Star. You are gonna be looked at, you are gonna be in the spotlight and you are the Queen of Swords, who is the person who can use her voice, not just her words on paper, but her own voice just speaking, to um, affect her destiny, affect her reality. Now let's look at the next Oracle card. It says, Full Moon in Cancer, Let Your Fears Dissolve. Very pretty card. And let's read about that one. Fear and neediness may now be at play. Fear is debilitating while neediness isn't usually very attractive. Acting out of fear is a risky response, so if you dwell on your insecurities, what you'll manifest is an extension of those insecurities. The reason why we should face our fears is that in doing so, 
they often simply dissolve. If we don't face them, they can influence us to act in ways we would other we otherwise would not, which means we can end up manifesting the very thing we are hoping to avoid. To see the fear that's in you, face it now. So one manifesting ritual that they suggest is add patchouli essential oil to your diffuser or bath. Find a comfortable position and relax with your eyes closed. Call in Selene, goddess of the moon, to guide you. Imagine Selene's energy as a silver beam bathing your entire body and ask her to guide you as you live in tune with the moon. Beautiful. So the full moon in Cancer takes place when the sun is in Capricorn. And so in January, we're going to have that full moon in Cancer. So that is probably when this whole situation will culminate. So you're seeing now what you need to do and what's happening for you, but this new relationship, so job, love, or both, is really what's going to culminate and be produced uh, in this month of October, but the fullness of it, the true culmination, the maturing of the relationship, whichever it is, job, business, or both, is really going to happen at the time of the full moon in Cancer, is what I believe. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being a subscriber. Please leave me some comments down below. Now, I am finishing up reading at the New York Ren Fair on October 9th, but you can still see me October 15th and 16th at the fairs in New Jersey. Just go to my website, thecoolcrone.com, to get information about all of those events. You can make appointments to get readings with me at the fairs in New Jersey only for October 15th, 16th by going to my website and clicking on fairs. The New York Ren Fair is advertised on my website. It gives you all of the details. You can still get tickets up until the October 9th, the last day. It's just on the weekend. It's a wonderful fair. People love going to it and dressing up. You don't have to dress up, but you can if you want to. And... That's your reading. Have a wonderful month of October, Gemini. I'm very excited for you. It looks like it's really going to be opening up for some big stuff. And I will see you next time.